Hello and welcome to the Thursday, March 7th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we have an exceptional good diary by Boyan. I want to spend a little bit of time on this uh, today. And this diary is about Quick. Quick being the new protocol or relatively new protocol that was developed by Google and initially used with HTTP in order to create HTTP3. But Quick tries to do a lot more than just sort of update HTTP. Quick really is more replacement for TCP. Now, Quick is running over UDP, but UDP being essentially data over IP, all of the intelligence in the protocol, basically what's commonly in your TCP sort of transport layer is now in your Quick header. This is where it gets a little bit iffy because yes, technically it's your application header, but it really sort of more behaves like a transport protocol with the added complication that it also provides encryption, which of course usually is part of the application layer. So really an odd protocol in that sense. The reason Quick was invented and that sort of, well, the name kind of gives it away is uh, to avoid some of the performance issues that you run into with TCP because A, TCP is a pretty old protocol and B, a lot of the parameters uh, that uh, determine TCP performance, like for example, how long it takes to resend a packet and the like, well, uh, that's determined by the operating system, not by the application. With Quick, the application has more control, so you can tune some of this behavior more to a particular application, like, for example, HTTP. Well, as I mentioned, uh, Quick is no longer just for HTTP. Most notably, SMB is also now uh, being uh, supported by Quick. And uh, yes, uh, more recent versions of Windows do support SMB over Quick, which means you will also have now SMB over UDP port 445, no longer just over TCP. The problem that Boyan originally tried to solve in his diary is how do you scan for a quick service? Well, uh, you could do a simple UDP scan, but UDP scanning is always tricky. In particular with Quick, you need to actually send a specific payload in order to get a response back. And that's what Boyan kind of solved with a Quick Mapping Tool, Quick Map, he calls it, that allows you to relatively efficiently with 50 threats to scan for Quick services. It also has another a little neat feature, and that's application layer protocol negotiation. This is a feature in Quick that basically allows you to run different application protocols like SMB and HTTP over Quick. Well, uh, with Quick Map, you can also brute force uh, different application layer protocols to see which protocol is supported on a particular port that responds to Quick. Boyan did release Quick Map as open source and a GitHub link can be found in the diary. Boyan also talks about some future abuse possibilities, like for example, the use of Quick as a covert channel. One other tricky part with Quick is that, well, uh, like I said, it is encrypted, it uses TLS 1.3, but it is very careful to encrypt as much as possible. So in normal TLS connections, TLS 1.2 in particular, you usually have a lot of metadata like server names and such that are exposed, certificates and such. Most of this is encrypted with Quick or just not present. And it's even possible, similar to what you have with encrypted client hellos, you can also encrypt the very first packet, even though that's currently not seen that much. So tricky protocol, take a look at Boyan's Quick Diary. There will also be a presentation that Boyan gave a week ago at a B-Sides conference in Zagreb uh, that should be available on uh, YouTube uh, sometime in the near future. Then in some additional updates here, we do have a new version of Chrome that was released. It fixes three vulnerabilities with a rating of high. Nothing, as far as I can tell, that's already being exploited. 
And Matt Muir with Cato has a write-up about a botnet that they have seen that has crypto coin mining using exposed Hadoop, Redis, and Confluence servers. Also, some Yarn servers are apparently affected by this. Nothing too terribly exciting. Well, if you have those servers exposed, you probably already have a couple crypto coin miners running on them. And the Team City vulnerability that I mentioned, uh, I think yesterday is already heavily being exploited. Uh, according to LeakX, out of 1,700 Team City servers that they identified, which, well, of course, includes also a couple of hundred honeypots, they saw 1,414 of these uh, servers already having added uh, users uh, based on the Team City vulnerability. So in essence, if you haven't patched your Team City server yet, if it's exposed to the internet, it has already been exploited. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.